The Avatar universe is full of powerful benders, but among these countless benders, some hold a power far beyond the rest. These are our top 10 picks for the strongest characters in the Avatar universe. To start us off, we have Prince Zuko. As a child, Zuko did struggle with his firebending techniques, but he truly came into his own during his teenage years, thanks to the teachings of his uncle Iroh. He was even able to hold his own against fully grown firebending masters. And Zuko only grew stronger throughout the series, learning new skills from his uncle, like redirecting lightning, and more importantly, inner peace. Next up is the authoritative equalist leader, Amon. You'll get your duel, and I will destroy you. At first, Amon may seem to have a major disadvantage when he claims he's not a bender. Amon is, however, an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He is so skilled, he is known to neutralize expert benders using no bending himself. Despite the skill, Amon is also secretly a highly trained waterbender. The few times we see him waterbend, he uses rather advanced techniques, but his strongest skill of all is the rare yet powerful waterbending technique, bloodbending. That's right, Amon can take full control over his enemies, and he can even do it without a full moon, something that was never even believed to be possible before Amon's family perfected the terrifying technique. Next on our list is the tyrannical leader himself, Fire Lord Oza. For the majority of the series, he remained more of an ominous mystery, a looming threat whose power came more from the fear of the unknown than his actual abilities. But when we finally did get to see Oza in action, he proved that his power came from much more than fear. The Fire Lord had an intense and wild style of firebending, fueled by anger and hate. While he did harness the power of Silzen's Comet to give his bending an extra boost, it is clear that Comet or no Comet, Ozai is a force to be reckoned with. Up next is everyone's favorite airbending teacher, Tenzin. Although Tenzin is a known pacifist and prefers to avoid a fight whenever possible, he has proven to be a potent example of airbending prowess. The burden of passing on thousands of years of airbending knowledge has driven Tenzin to honing his skill as an airbender to a high level of mastery. I will never let you get to Korra. Unfortunately, you don't have a choice. Yes, I do. He is able to hold his own against numerous highly trained equalists and their mechanical weaponry. He arguably got the better of the infamous Zaheer, keeping the villain on the defense and demonstrating his bending superiority before losing due to a little more than some bad luck. All in all, we think Tenzin could easily take Zaheer in a fair fight. Strength seems to run in the family because our next entry is Tenzin's mother, Katara. Oh, great. You again. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. From the very beginning, Katara's sheer determination to hone her waterbending skills, even without a teacher, was a demonstration of great strength. Let's do this. From that determination, we saw Katara grow as a bender throughout the series collecting skills like state changing, healing, and even blood bending. Her waterbending expertise coupled with her ingenuity gave her a significant advantage as she found clever and unique ways to put her waterbending to use. Although Azula is only 14 years old, she is regarded as one of the most fearsome firebenders of her time. After mastering the basics of firebending at a very young age, her flames held such an intense heat that they developed a signature blue color. In addition to her standard firebending, she quickly advanced onto more complicated powers, like the ability to generate and control lightning, which is regarded as one of the most powerful and dangerous techniques in a firebender's arsenal. She has also proven time and time again to be a skilled combatant and strategist and was often able to use her smooth demeanor to get inside her opponent's head. Azula's cold and relentless personality added to her immense physical power that made her a fierce leader as well as a frighteningly dangerous foe to any who would dare cross her. What is wrong with that child? Next up is Toph Beifang, AKA the Blind Bandit. I am the greatest earthbender in the world. Don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. Though you wouldn't know it by visiting her home in Ba Sing Se, Toph is an earthbending prodigy. Her mastery of the craft allowed her to perfect the technique of using earthbending to detect vibrations in the ground, giving her a hyper-awareness of her surroundings. Not only did this replace her sight, 
but it allowed her to anticipate her enemy's every move and could even inform her if someone was lying. He's not lying. How can you tell? I can feel his breathing and heartbeat. When people lie, there's a physical reaction. He's telling the truth. And we haven't even scratched the surface. Toph is able to use her earthbending for countless applications, whether it's to protect her allies, immobilize her enemies, or even mobilize herself. Toph has a skill for almost any situation. Need a ride? Ah! She has even gone as far as to invent and master an entirely new form of bending. Have I ever mentioned how sweet it is that you invented metal bending? You could stand to mention it more. When Toph runs into something she struggles with, she puts her rock-like willpower to the task until she's mastered that as well. Woo! Toph, you rule. Don't let his good nature fool you, because beneath Iroh's optimism and wisdom comes a raw power that only experience can bring. As one of the few firebenders of his time that understood how to firebend without resorting to anger, Iroh had a high level of mastery over the art. Though he would usually prefer to avoid a fight, he was not afraid to demonstrate his ability if the need presented itself. In addition to his skill in firebending, he was also knowledgeable in the other forms of bending, and even went as far as incorporating techniques he learned from waterbenders. And as if that's not enough, Iroh was also a master tactician in battle, and was even once considered the Fire Nation's top general. Centuries from now, people will study the great Admiral Zhao, who destroyed the last of the Water Tribe civilization. You're lucky you're here to see it. Be careful what you wish for, Admiral. History is not always kind to its subjects. Avatar Korra showed she was capable of the basics when she was a little more than a toddler. I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! By the time she was 17, she had mastered three out of the four elements and even showed immense skill in fighting while switching between bending styles. Chump. Water, fire, and earth bending came to her as naturally as breathing as she pulled off advanced techniques with little hesitation. While she initially struggled with air bending, she eventually proved she could master that as well and even fight using only air bending when needed. Punch, punch, punch! See? Mastered. Her grasp over the physical aspect of bending was so strong that she was able to use it to take down some of the most powerful forces in the world. With Katara as her teacher, she was also able to master the technique of healing, and through Unalak she learned to bend the spirits, only adding to her status of one of the most powerful benders that the world has ever seen. Go in peace. Finally, we have the last airbender himself, Avatar Aang. Before Aang even knew he was the Avatar, he was an airbending prodigy, reaching the rank of master by the young age of 12, making him the youngest airbending master in history. Aang's real test would be in his mission to end the Hundred Year War and bring peace to the world. And that's where he would demonstrate his true power. When Aang began his journey, he only knew how to airbend and had less than a year to learn and master the other three elements. While he was playful and often lighthearted, he proved to be a determined student when he focused his efforts and became proficient in waterbending, earthbending, and firebending in record time. While he did gain a high level of expertise in the physical aspect of bending, it is in the spiritual aspect where he really excelled. Thanks to his training from the Air Nomad monks, Aang demonstrated a calmness of mind and a level of wisdom far beyond his years. This spiritual strength was only amplified after Aang's training with Guru Pratik and learned to unlock his seven chakras. Aang was even able to learn an entirely new form of bending, energy bending. This ancient and forgotten art allowed Aang to bend the energy inside of others and even remove their bending abilities entirely. Aang's physical and spiritual power as well as his own unbendable spirit were what ultimately allowed him to take down the Fire Lord and end the Hundred Year War. Who do you think is the strongest character in Avatar? Let us know in the comments below. That lemur! He's earthbending! No, you idiot! It's the girl! Oh, of course. Nick Rewind is all about classic Nickelodeon. Want more? Like and comment below. 
And don't forget to subscribe to the Nick Rewind channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss a new video.